This video is brought to you by electricalexamcoach.com, offering the number one electrical exam prep series. You can take our paid version with the Unlimiting Testing Center, but you can also take our free version that is completely free without the Unlimited Testing Center. Also, if these videos have been helping you at any time, you can also go there and pay it forward to see it head on to the next generation. I am the Electrical Code Coach. Let's go ahead and get to it. Hey y'all, what's up? It's the Electrical Code Coach, and this is week eight of the Electrical Code Coach training program. I want to let you know that I'm super proud of you. You've been working really hard. This is week eight. We're about to jump into some really fun things that we actually use out in the field, and that's going to be overcurrent protection and ampacity. Now, this is a really dense set of subjects, so don't get overwhelmed. That's why we have these videos, and if you ever need any help, you can email me at electricalcodecoach at gmail.com. Let's get to it. All right, y'all, every week I like to ask two icebreaker questions to our in-person people, and I like to also extend that to online. That's how we get to know each other. So the first one is, what is your dream car? Now, this could be a car, truck, van, doesn't matter what it is, motorcycle. Let us know what your dream car is in the comments below. And also, what is your favorite subject that we've learned so far? We've covered so much material, and we've learned so much. What's your favorite subject? Let us know by dropping it in the comments below. All right, so we're going to get into overcurrent protection. Anytime I mention overcurrent protection, I'm talking about standard breakers or fuses, unless otherwise stated. I want to get you familiar with Article 240. We're going to be dealing with it for the rest of the entire program. What size breaker would you use if you had a 56 amp load on a piece of equipment in a house up Wild Holler Road? The location of this table that we're going to use is something that you have to absolutely master. First, flip to your OCPD tab on your codebook in your tabs. It's Article 220. It stands for Overcurrent Protective Devices. If you've not picked up your Mike Colt tabs, you can do so in the links below. Also, like I said, like I told you when I started, we were broke and I had to make my own tabs. So I used lined paper or computer paper and you can write OCPD on it and use a piece of scotch tape and tag it on there at Article 240. Anytime you're dealing with fuses or breakers and the ampere rating does not match the standard size breaker, like this case here that we have, do they make a 56 amp breaker? No, they do not. You can use the next size up breaker. When you're dealing with wire, that's okay up to 800 amps. You don't have to understand what that means now. We're going to learn about that in a little bit. So like I said, do they make a 56 amp breaker? No. Let's look at 240.6. It covers the standard ratings for fuses and inverse time breakers. You'll mainly deal with table 240.6. It lists all the standard sizes. So if you fall anywhere in between there, you go to 240.6 and you can go to the next size up, up to 800 amps. Um, and there's a rule that's attached there for wire and we're gonna learn about that here in the coming weeks. But you can use the next size up to cover the load. So we have a 56 amp load. Does anyone see 56 amps on the chart? Look at that chart, 240.6. So what should you do? You can select the next size up. So we're going to put it on a 60 amp breaker. And we're going to learn more and more about this. Remember the key to mastering this stuff is through repetition. And that's what we're going to continue to do now. If any of you know this one, please do not shout it out. How many hours does something have to run to be considered a continuous load? This may be something that you've dealt with in the field already. Every test that you're going to take will have one or more what I call definition questions. You have to learn how to read the play. What I mean by that is, is typically your exam will have one or two questions that are just regurgitating you a definition from the code book. And you have to learn which ones those are and not flip through the index and waste a bunch of time and go straight to Article 100. So in this one... It's asking a general question about a continuous load. You could spend all day looking in the index, but instead, when you see a question like this, you want to head straight to the Article 100 definitions first. In Article 100, you will find the definition continuous load. A continuous load is a load where the maximum current is expected to continue for three hours or more. So you would select A. If some of you know this one, please do not shout it out. How many hours does something have to run to be considered continuous duty? 
Like I said, you're going to have one or more definition questions. You could spend all day, but let's head straight to Article 100. See if you can find it. Pause the video now and see if you can find continuous duty. In Article 100, you will find the definition duty continuous. If you're ever dealing with a two-word definition, sometimes they'll give you the definition and want you to explain it. If you're ever dealing with a two-word definition and you cannot find it in the uh, Article 100, try flipping it around. For some reason, to make the codebook even more complicated, they will do stuff like this. I don't know why, but they do. Duty continuous. Operation at a substantially constant load of an indefinitely long time. So, C, indefinitely. When sizing overcurrent protection, at what percentage shall a load be multiplied if it contains a continuous load? I want you to use your index and keyword process and see if you can find the answer now. First, start out with what you feel like the main keyword is. Pause the video now and see if you can go there. Let's search C for continuous load. First it says 210.19a. Let's flip there first. What does it say? Not what we needed. Our second article is 210.20a. What does it say? And it is what we need. 125%. What size breaker would you use if you had a 26 amp load in a house and it's known that it will run for more than three hours at a time? Okay, because it's a continuous load, we will multiply it by 125%. So you take the amp load, multiply it by 1.25, and your new amp load is 32.5 for sizing overcurrent protection and your wire. Now that we have our total amp load of 32.2, we can select our overcurrent device. I want you to use your OCPD tab on your codebook, flip to table 240.6a, pause the video and see if you can find out what the next standard ampere rating for a breaker is. And we find that 35 is the next standard ampere rating. What size breaker would you use if you had a 37 amp load in a house and it's known that it will run for more than five hours at a time? Now this is really a trick question because it doesn't matter if it's three hours, five hours, 12 hours, or 11 hours. It's all just considered a continuous load. The question uh, creators of the test love to throw stuff like that in to see if it'll get you off your game. You know that three hours is a continuous load, but what if it's five? And they're hoping that you'll spend some time flipping around through the code book. Just remember, if it's over three, you're going to multiply it by 1.25. So you take 37 multiplied by 1.25. That is going to give you a new total amp load of 36.25 for sizing your overcurrent protection in your wire. Now that we have our total amps of 46.25, we can select our overcurrent device. I want you to use your OCPD tab and head to table 240.6a and see if you can find the next standard ampere rating breaker. Pause the video now. And we find that 50 amps is our next standard ampere rating. What size main breaker would you select for a home with a total calculated load of 47,000 VAs on a 120-240 volt system? Now this seems like a big question, but you've already done all these steps. You can do it. First, we need to find out how many amps we're dealing with. If you remember from week two, this is just simple Ohm's law. So you take your total VAs, divide it by your system voltage, and that's going to give you 195.83 amps. Now we just head to 240.6a and we're going to select the next size up standard ampere rating. In this case, it's going to be a 200. What size main breaker would you select for a home with a total calculated load of 23,123 VAs on a 120 240 volt system? First, we need to find out how many amps we're dealing with. We apply the same process. So I equals P over E. So our amps is going to be equal to our voltage divided up into our power, which in this case is 23,123 VAs or watts, same thing. 
So after you do your division, that's going to give you 96.35 amps. You now use table 240.6a and select the next size up, C. Now let's take a look at how to size wire. Ampacity's definition, the maximum current in amperes that a conductor can carry continuously under the conditions of use without exceeding its temperature rating. I want everyone to turn to page 150. We're going to explore our primary ampacity table. This is going to be the table that you're going to be using for all of your testing. I want to spend the rest of the time this week getting you guys started on the basics of ampacity. So when you get to page 150, if you need to pause the video, go ahead and do so now. When you get to page 150, you're going to see table 310.15B16. And what this table is, is going to show you what ampere rating the wire can carry safely. So if you start on the left hand side, you're going to notice that there is the size wire. Um, the AWG or KC mill. If you go to the next column, if you look up at the top, it says 60 degrees C and it lists a few types of wire under that. If you go to the middle column, you'll see 75 degrees C and you'll list some more insulation rating or types under that. And then you'll notice to the right of that at the top, the 90 degrees C column. And you'll notice even more types of insulation rated under that. Then that table divides in half and it starts all over again. If you look and go back up, you see the 60 degrees C and then 75 and then 90 degrees respectively. What that is, is one side of it is aluminum on the right hand side and the left hand side of that table is copper. So primarily for your testing, you're going to be choosing from the 75 degrees C column for your final selection. And the reason that is, is most of your equipment is going to be rated 75 degrees C. We're going to learn about temperature corrections, ampacity adjustment, or excuse me, bundling adjustment and temperature corrections as we follow through the next few weeks. But I just want to get you guys familiar with this table. So if you look on the left hand side, on the copper side, in the 75 degrees C column, what is the ampacity of number eight wire? So you come down on the left hand side all the way down to number eight. Then you slide over to the 75 degree C column of the copper and you're going to get 50 amperes. So this table is showing you the allowable ampacity of that conductor. Um, and then we're going to learn about different corrections and adjustments later in the few weeks. But get familiar with this. If you look on my highlighting video, I have a video that has tips of highlighting. The only thing I suggest highlighting is a center line in between the two tables and then I would highlight aluminum or copper clad. So I would put a center line in between the two tables in my highlighter and then I would also highlight the aluminum or copper clad. That way you know the difference. The left hand side is unhighlighted, it's your copper. The right hand side is uh, highlighted and it's your aluminum. Because when you're testing, you'll read that question you know, hopefully twice and if you don't pay attention whether it's asking for copper or aluminum, you're just going to flip here, use the copper side, and you may end up getting the answer wrong. So I want you to get familiar with this table um, before you move forward. We're going to spend the next two weeks looking at impacity and overcurrent. Mostly when testing, you're going to choose, like I said, from the 75 degree C column. You'll hear me say it a hundred times because that's very important. If you choose from the wrong column, you're going to end up with the incorrect answer. If the question states that the terminals are 60 degrees or 90 degree terminal lugs, you will make your final selection from the respective column. So you'll have motor questions sometimes that say it's terminating to 60 degrees terminals on that motor. So you'll do your calculations and then make your final selection from whatever one it specifies. If the question does not specify, always choose from the 75 degree C column. All the equipment that we use out in the field, panels, receptacles, they're uh, almost, you know, 95% of the time that you're going to use them, they're going to be rated for a 75 degree C. What size AWG conductor would you select for a 60 amp load using THHW terminating on 75 degree C terminals? 
So one of our main tabs that we're going to be using is our Ampacity tab. So why don't you check that out? Co close your codebook, find your Ampacity tab, and open up uh, to that page. You're going to look for 310.15B16. That's our primary Ampacity table. And what size wire would you put on a 60 amp load with 75 degree C terminals? I do want to note that this question lists THHW. And if you look here in the 75 degree C column, there is THHHW listed in the, in the group of insulations up there. But even if you do not see it, in that group and your question uh, specifies 75 degree C terminals, you still choose from the 75 degree C column. Okay, so as we look at the 75 degree C column, we're going to select a six gauge conductor. So you go down, you find six over on the left hand side, you come over and you T over. If you look up, number eight is just not big enough. It's only good for 50 amps, so you're going to be required to go one size up. And you're going to select 65. I do want to note that um, you are going to want to always double check yourself when you tee across. Sometimes you can use a piece of paper or your pencil to make sure you're sliding across to the right column and from the right side column. Okay, so in true codebook fashion, there's always going to be some curveballs and NM cable, which if you're not familiar with that term, it's just non-metallic sheath cable. That's like Romex, what we use every day in the field. So what temperature degree column must NM cable opacity be selected from? The first time we're going to use our index and keyword process to show you the cable and pipe sections of the codebook. And what I love about the next few weeks and from here to the end of the program we're going to start getting into things that you're going to use every day or use all the time. So it really starts becoming interesting. So let's, I want you guys to pause the video now and look for NM cable in the index. Start in the end section and look for NM cable, see if you can find it. In N, we do not find NM, but we find non-metallic sheath cable, which is the long version of how to say NM cable. So looking under the subsections of a uh, non-metallic sheath section in, in, in the index, we're going to be continuing looking for something about ampacity. And in this case, we do find something. It refers us to article 334.80. I want you to pause the video. Go ahead and flip there now. So let's read 334.80 together. I want you to pause the video and I want you to read it right now. Okay, so we find our answer. It's going to want us to choose from the 60 degree C column. And I want you to flip to page 150 right now and I want to look at it together. So when you get back to table 310.15B16 on page 150, if you look on the left hand side, you are going to see that 8 gauge wire is only good for 40 amps. And if you work in residential and work with Romex, that may sound familiar. What do we always put 8-gauge wire on unless you're dealing with you know, a motor or uh, some HVAC? You're always going to put it on a 40. What do you always put 10 on? A 30. So if you ever wondered why you did that, it's because you must select from the 60-degree C column when dealing with NM cable. So you must remember that when you're testing all other cable, even if it was rated for 75 degree C terminals, when you made your final selection and the question listed NM cable, you're going to have to select from the 60 degree C column. Now, everyone, I want you to flip your code book closed and I want you to look at all the purple tabs. And this is a really cool part of the code book. So if you look at your purple tabs, starting at... Uh, 320. You're going to see armored cable. Then you see RMC, which is rigid metal conduit. Then FMC. Then FLMC or LFMC. Then PVC. Then EMT. I want you to flip to EMT. So it's article 358. Use your EMT tab. And if you look there, almost every pipe and wire has a, a section in the code book. So you look here. Uh, 
360.10 on page 211 um, is use as permitted for EMT. And then 360.12 is use as not permitted. And then you look at the bending radius. Um, I'm looking at FMT, excuse me. And it'd be over here on page 210. Okay, so page 210, I was reading FMT. So page 210, you have EMT. It shows the use is permitted, use is not permitted, um, maximum number of bends, um, number of conductors, uh, how the bends can be made, um, reaming and threading. It talks about securing and supporting. And if you look through this part of the code book, almost every pipe and wire has its own section. So that's something you can use in the field. Hey, how can I use EMT? How often does it need to be secure and supported? So this is something really cool that you can use in the field every day. Take a few minutes, check out a few of the tabs. You know, if you're used to working with uh, FMT, um, flexible metal tubing, if you're used to working with rigid metal conduit, flip to that section real quick, take a few minutes and check it out. What size AWG conductor and protection would you select for a 40 amp load using NM cable to feed the circuit? I want you to go ahead and do that now. I know you can do this. Pause the video. You're just applying what we've learned so far and see if you can figure it out on your own. First, you always select the overcurrent protection. Go to 240.6a and we see that 40 amps is a standard size breaker so we select 40. remember how we learned that before that you always go you find your final amp load in this case there's no special provisions so 40 amps is our load then you go to 240.6a pick the next standard amp your breaker rating and then you're good to go now you're going to size the wire so one of our main tabs that we're going to be using is our ampacity tab 310.15B16 is our primary impacity table. So what size wire should we use? Remember, we're doing NM cable, so you have to select from the 60 degree C column. We look in the 60 degree C column and we're gonna select an eight gauge conductor. Eight gauge conductor on a 40 amp overcurrent device. And we're gonna select C. Great job. What size overcurrent protection would you select for a 60 amp load running for more than three hours using THHN type wire terminating on 75 degree C terminals? I want you to pause the video now. I know that you can get this one. Pause it now, work it out, and we'll, we'll work it out together in just a minute. We have to apply, remember to apply the 125% rule because it's a continuous load. So we take 60, multiply by 1.25, that's going to equal 75. And we head over to 240.6a and we select the next size up, which is 80. I do want to note that the, the question makers will throw things in like what type of wire and what terminals it's terminating on to throw you off. The only thing you need to know in this question is the amp load and how long it's running. So always be careful. They might have you flipping through the ampacity table because they list THHN wire and what type of terminals. You have to make sure you read what the question's really asking for. In this case, it was just overcurrent protection. So we flipped to 240.6a after applying our rules and we can select 80 for our overcurrent device. What size conductors would you select for a 60 amp load running for more than three hours using THHN type wire terminating on 75 degree C terminals with 80 amps of overcurrent protection. So we are going to go through the motions here. You're going to need to find the ampacity that you're going to select the wire by first. So we do apply the 125% rule because it's a continuous load. It does apply to wire as well as it applies to overcurrent protection. So we take 60 multiplied by 1.25 that is going to give us 75 amps. You will always size the wire and the overcurrent protection device based on the load to be served. You do not size the wire based on the breaker. I, do, I have to make that important uh, note. When you get above 800 amps, there's some special rules. We're going to learn about that later. But you always size the wire and the overcurrent protection based off the load. Now that we have our total amps, we can size our conductors. 
We have a 75 amps with the adjusted 1.25. We head to our opacity tab in our code book. In this case, we're going to select a number four, which is good for 85 amps. I want to note that we're using the 75 degree C column because our question states that the terminals are 75 degree. We have an 85 amp wire and an 80 amp breaker. But like I said, you always size the wire and the overcurrent protection based on the load to be served. There are some special rules when you get above 800 amps, but we're going to cover that you know, later on. But I do want to note you always size it based on the load. Select number four. What size AWG conductor and protection would you select for a 40 amp load that's going to run for more than 10 hours using THHN conductors terminating to 75 degrees C terminals? First size your overcurrent protection. The reason you get in the habit of doing that now is because later, if the overcurrent protection is over 800 amps or 800 amps or over, excuse me, you are going to be required to use a different set of rules. So 40 multiplied by 1.25 because it's a continuous load and our new load is 50 amps. Then we go to 240.6A. We see that 50 amps is a standard ampere breaker rating. So we're going to go ahead and select a 50 amp. Now we're ready to size our wire. First, find your total amperage, 40 multiplied by 1.25 because of the continuous load. That's going to give us 50 amps. Now we flip to our opacity tab in our code book. 310.15B16 is our primary opacity table. As we look at the 75 degree C column, we select an 8 gauge. Let's make our final selection. 8 gauge conductors on 50 amp overcurrent device. And we're going to select C. What size AWG copper conductor and protection would you select for a 64 amp load using THHW terminating on 75 degree C terminals? So this question is asking for both the conductor and the protection. First, we're going to size our overcurrent protection. Go ahead and pause the video now and see if you can figure out what size breaker we're going to use for this case. We head over to 240.6A and we find that our next standard ampere breaker rating is 70 amps. Okay guys, now let's size our copper conductors. Our question holds all the keys to what we need to look for. So I will give you this clue. I want you to go ahead and use your opacity tab and then I want to see if you can size the wire. Remember that it's copper on 75 degree C terminals. Pause the video now. Okay, so we use 310.15B16. That's our primary opacity table. We look in the 75 degree C column for copper conductors and we're going to select a six gauge, six gauge conductor. It's good for 65 amps. But our overcurrent protection is 70 and our wire is only good for 65 amps. Is this okay? Okay, so up until this point, our wire has met or exceeded our overcurrent protection. Now that we know we can use the next size up standard breaker to cover the load. We have a 64 amp load. They don't make a 64 amp breaker. We go to 240.6A and we select a 70 amp breaker because that's the next standard size. Now, what about the next size up rule to protect the wire? We have 65 amp wire. It covers our 64 amp load, but can you protect it with a 70 amp breaker? Everyone head to your OCPD tab in your code books. Let's take a look at 240.4B. We're going to read it together. It's on page 94 in the top left hand corner. Pause the video now if you need to. Okay, so when we're on page 94 in the top left hand corner, overcurrent devices rated 800 amps or less. The next higher standard overcurrent device rating above the impacity of the conductor being protected shall be permitted to be used provided all of the following conditions are met. So we are allowed to do it. We have 65 amp wire. We can protect it with a 70 amp breaker if one through three are met. Number one says conductors being protected are not part of a branch circuit supplying more than one receptacle for cord and plug connected loads. So this does not apply for standard branch circuits unless they're only controlling one receptacle. Part two says the opacity of the conductor does not correspond with the standard breaker. 
So did they make a 65 amp breaker? No. With that being said, it's saying that as long as, you know, say if you had 65 amp wire and a 70 amp breaker, that does not correspond. So you can go ahead and use the next standard one. And part three says the next higher standard rating selection is not exceeding 800 amps. So there are some parameters here. Number one says that the conductors being protected are not a part of a normal branch circuit supplying more than one receptacle. In our case, we have a single load, 64 amps, we're good to go. Part two says the ampacity of the conductors does not match a standard breaker. Our wire is good for 65 amps. Do they make a 65 amp breaker? No. And ours is nowhere near 800 amps, so we're good to go. So even if our conductors are less than the breaker, as long as it meets sections one through three, and it's less than 800 amps, and it's large enough to cover the load, that's a super critical point. You, This is how you size anything for a single load, single service, whatever. First, figure out the amp draw. In this case, it was given to us, 64 amps. The first thing you do is select the overcurrent device. So you're going to go to 240.6A, and you're going to select the next standard breaker. In this case, we had a 64 amp load. We select a 70 amp breaker. It's large enough to protect the load. Then you head over to 310.15B16, and you're going to select a wire that is large enough to cover the load. Don't worry about the overcurrent protection. You have to cover the load. In this case, we have a 64 amp load, so we selected a 65 amp wire, so we're good to go there. Our load is covered. Then the question was, can that 70 amp breaker protect our 65 amp wire? And the answer is yes under these parameters. So we have a six gauge conductor on a 70 amp breaker. What size AWG copper conductor and protection would you select for a 755 amp load using THHW wire terminating on 75 degree C terminals? First, we're gonna size our overcurrent protection. I want you guys to see if you can stop, pause the video and see if you can size the overcurrent protection for this 755 amp load. We're going to use 240.6A. We find that our next standard breaker is 800 amps. What size copper conductor and protection would you select for a 755 amp load using THHW terminating on 75 degrees C terminals? So let's head to our impacity tab. I'm going to walk you through this one because it's kind of a new concept. So as we look in the 75 degree C column, we have to do a little bit more thinking about this question. One of our options was D, 200 KC mil. That was the only one that didn't ask us to parallel the conductors. And if you look down, 2000 KC mil only goes up to 665 amps. So a single conductor is not going to work in this case. So when you're doing a question like this, you can actually use your answers to work backwards until you find what you're looking for. And I'll show you how. One thing I want to make clear, the test is always asking for the minimum code. You could put a larger wire on everything. So since the code is looking for the smallest wire to cover the load on a question, you're going to start with the smallest possible choice and work backwards until you find a large enough wire to cover the load. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. So in this case, the smallest wire is parallel 400. So how many amps is 400 KC mil good for? It's good for 335. Now, what do you do if you want to parallel it? You just multiply it by two. So anytime you want to parallel a conductor, you take its ampacity from 310.15B16 and you just multiply it by two. So if we take 335 amps, we multiply it by two, we're going to get 670 amps. That's how much it's good for now. Is that large enough to cover our 755 amp load? No. All right, our next largest wire is answer B. It's parallel 500 KC mils. So how many amps is 500 KC mil good for? What do we do if we want to parallel it? We multiply it by two. So we found that it's good for 380 amps. We take and multiply it by two 
and that's going to give us 760 amps. Now will a 760 amp wire cover a 755 amp load? Yes. Can we still use the next size up rule to protect it with an 800 amp overcurrent device? Now here's where we need to do some checking. We remember that something happens around 800 amps. Let's go look. Let's head back over to page 94. Let's read 240.4b just to make sure. When we read it, yes we can if it's 800 amps or less. So if it was 801 amps, you'd have to next size up to thousand um a thousand overcurrent device thousand amp overcurrent device and then the wire has to meet or exceed a thousand amps so we're going to do that one in the next question let's check it out in this case we select parallel 500s that's the smallest wire that will cover the load and we can protect it with an 800 amp overcurrent protective device what size awg copper conductor and protection would you select for an 855 amp load using THHW terminating on 75 degrees C terminals. First we size our overcurrent protection. I want you to head and do that now. Pause the video if you need to. Okay, so using our OCPD tab, we find in 240.6a that our next standard ampere breaker rating is 1000 amps. Okay guys, now let's size our wire. We're going to use our four possible answers to work backwards. We see that C is our smallest wire, so let's start there. Remember, the code is asking for the smallest wire to protect the load. We try C, and we take 600 kc mil. It's good for 420 amps. To parallel it, we multiply it by 2, and that's going to equal 840 amps. Not enough to cover our 855 amp load. We try A, 700 kc mil. And it's good for 460 amps. Parallel it, multiply it by 2, we're going to get 920 amps. Is that enough to cover our 855 amp load? Yes, it is. But we have to remember in 240.4b, it lets us know that if it's above 800 amp overcurrent protection device, that wire must meet or exceed the overcurrent protection device. So we have to find a wire that not only will cover the load, but that will meet or exceed 1000 amps because that's where the rule changes. Try B, we take our 800 kc mil, it's good for 490, multiply it by 2, it's good for 980, so that's not enough. So we have to go to D, we know that's our answer, we do our math just to check. We multiply it by 2, it's good for 520, multiply by 2 in parallel, that's going to give us 1040. So in this case, we're going to parallel 900 kc mil, and we're going to put it on a 1,000 amp breaker. What size AWG copper conductor and protection would you select for a service with a total calculated load of 47,000 VAs for a single family dwelling on a 12240 volt system? Now, I know this seems like a big question, but you can do it. It's everything you've learned so far. First, we need to find out how many amps we're dealing with. I want you to pause the video, remember to use Ohm's Law, and figure out how many amps we're working with. We select our overcurrent protection first. So, I want you to pause the video now and go select your overcurrent protection based on that amperage. Remember, we have 47,000 VAs. We just divide by the system voltage. That's going to give us 195.83. We could round up to 196. And we're going to use 240.6A, and we're going to select the next standard size up, which is 200. All right, now let's size the wire. We're dealing with 195 amp load, and if the code book were simple, we could just jump to our opacity tab, size it to 3 out wire, and move on with life. But... Since the codebook is not, everybody flip to 310.15b7 on page 149. Go ahead and pause the video now if you need to, and we'll pick up when you get there. So when we get to page 149, in the top left-hand corner, in part 7, we're going to read it together. Single phase dwelling unit services and feeders for one family dwelling units, so a single home and the individual dwelling units of two and multifamily dwellings. Service and feeder conductors supplied by a single phase 12240 volt system shall be permitted to be as sized in between 310 
dot 15 b7 1 through 4 we're primarily going to focus on 1 and 2 if you notice the highlighted part right under that it includes 208 120 volt systems that are in these same parameters so let's read number one for services rated 1 through 400 amps the service conductor supplying the entire load that is super critical with a one family dwelling or the service conductors supplying the entire load associated with an individual dwelling unit of one and two family dwelling units shall be permitted to have an ampacity of not less than 83 percent of the service rating we're going to learn about that as we go part two says for a feeder for a one through 400 amp the feeder conductor supplying the entire load associated with one family dwelling units or the feeder conductor supplying the entire load associated with the individual dwelling unit of a two family or multi family dwelling unit shall be permitted to have an impacity of not less than 83 percent and we're going to play that out and i will show you exactly what it means in the next slides we read it so if the service protection is one through 400 amps and um it falls through the these parameters in one through four at 83 percent reduction factor must be applied and then you will size the wire okay so we're dealing with a 200 amp breaker first you size your overcurrent protection always you always do that first now we must take because this is a single family dwelling unit service we must take and multiply it by the demand factor 0.83 so that's going to give us 166 amps that's the new quote load that you size your wire by now that this is our new load we're going to head back to 310.15 b16 and size it to cover the load we find in the 75 degree c column that 2 watt is good for 175 amps have you ever wondered why we put 2 watt copper on a 200 amp service when you're out in the field when it should require 3 watt copper this is the reason why because of the 83 percent rule so we're going to go through this a bunch of times don't feel overwhelmed you'll be a master by the time you're done with it okay so we're going to select 2 watt on a 200 amp overcurrent device what size awg aluminum conductor and protection would you select for a service with a total calculated load of 47,000 vas for a single family dwelling on a 122 40 volt system first we need to find out how many amps we're dealing with and then we're going to select our overcurrent protection so we use ohm's law we have 47,000 vas we divide it by the system voltage and that is going to give us our amperage 195.83 now use 240.6a and select the next standard size of 200 amps when you're dealing with 195 amp load if the code book were simple we would jump to our opacity tab size it for 250 kc mil and move on but we have to apply the 310.15 b7 on page 149 if our service is rated 1 through 400 amps you multiply it by 0.83 then you size your wire so we're dealing with a 200 amp breaker we must multiply that by 0.83 our new quote load to size it by is 166 amps now we head back to our ampacity table and we find in the 75 degree c column that four odd aluminum is good for 180 amps have you ever wondered why our quad and triplex wire is only four odd aluminum and not 250 kc mil it's because of the 0.83 rule so now we can use four odd aluminum it's only good for 180 amps but the 0.83 rule allows us to use it so we put four out wire on a 200 amp breaker now that is real world stuff you do this every day you put you know you probably you may not calculate the load i love one of my inspectors my favorite thing he says is uh, most guys pull up to the to a house like this they look at it don't even get out of the truck and they say ah that's about a 200 and if they you know it's got a big basement maybe a second floor they're like mm, that looks like about a 400 so now that you're learning how to actually do a load calculation and size your service you can do this for real in the real world what size feeder conductors would you select for a 100 amp overcurrent device for a feeder that services one apartment 
using copper conductors on 75 degree C terminals. First, we flip to our opacity tab in our codebook. We're dealing with a feeder for a single unit, so we must apply what we've just learned, the 0.83 rule. So we take our overcurrent device, apply the demand factor, 0.83, multiply it by it, and that's going to give us 83 amps. Now in our 75 degree C column, we see that number 4 is good for 85 amps. So we select C. What size feeder conductors would you select for a 100 amp overcurrent device for a feeder servicing one apartment unit using aluminum conductors on 75 degree C terminal lugs? I want you to pause the video now. You can do this question. It's everything we've just learned. I do want to note that we are using aluminum conductors in this question. Pause the video now. First, we flip to our opacity tab in our codebook. We're dealing with a feeder for a single unit, so we must use the 83% rule that we've just learned. Our overcurrent device is 100 amps multiplied by 0.83. That's going to give us our new load to size it by of 83 amps. We head to our 75 degree C column and we see that number two is good for 90 amps. And we're going to select B. What size service conductors would you select for a 125 amp overcurrent device with a 119 amp calculated load using aluminum conductors on 75 degree C terminal lugs on a commercial building? So we flip to our opacity tab on our code book. We're dealing with a commercial building, so 310.15B7 does not apply, and we must size the wire based on the load. So the overcurrent protective device in this case is irrelevant. We must size it to serve the calculated load. In our 75 degree C column, we see that one knot is good for 120 amps, so we are going to select D. What size AWG aluminum conductors and protection would you select for a service with a total calculated load of 52,000 VAs for a single family dwelling on a 12240 volt system? First, we need to find out how many amps we're dealing with and then select our overcurrent protected device. Why don't you find out how many amps we're dealing with and then we'll come back and size the overcurrent device. We use Ohm's law and that is going to give us two, 216 amps. Now we use 240.6A and we select the next standard ampere breaker, which is a 225. What size AWG aluminum conductor would we select? We're dealing with a 216 amp load, but if the code book were simple, we could jump straight to our opacity tab and select 300kc mil, move on with life. But we've learned it's not, so we must apply the 0.83 rule. Okay? We're dealing with a 225 amp breaker, so we must take 225 multiplied by 0.83. We're going to round up to 187. This is our new load that we'll size our wire by. So we head back to 310.15B16, our primary opacity table. We find in the 75 degree C column that 250 KC mil aluminum is good for 205 amps. And we're going to select C.